Well, I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy to be on this leg in these bends. <laughs> and have people be like, oh, hi, watch your videos. Ciao, God. Lord, you upgrade me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. To my channel, my name is Yitzi. 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 Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you are doing fine. The struggle to film right now is real. It's real, it's real because I'm just trying to make sure that this video is not blurry. I hope it's not. Let me just check actually. So, as someone that is you know very spiritual and has strong faith in Christ Jesus, um small decisions big decisions i pray about it we pray my husband and i we pray about these things it was something that like it was a question i asked him that oh i hope you can see me yeah anyway <laughs> it was a question that i had asked him that you know like would he ever consider living in in um nigeria it was a question i asked him that would he ever consider living in the uk and most times, for like for many years, my husband's been like, nope, 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 it's not for him. And that that time I asked him, he was like, maybe. Like, and I was shocked because, you know, it had been burdening in my heart. Like, I just felt like it was time for us to be to shift and to come back to the UK. But like I said, I wasn't really feeling that. I was like, ah, if I come my comfort would be disrupted. And <laughs> if anyone, those that know me know that I like to live the soft life. I like to be comfortable. And um, I didn't want that to be disrupted. So when he said that, that really threw me through a loop. And I was like, God, like, I need you to just clarify, is this your will? And God gave me a dream. Like, he speaks to me a lot through dreams. I've, I've mentioned that before here. That And, um, and yeah, so... It showed that we, my husband and I, were very, very much united on the decision, and the next steps were just to, was just to pick up our bags and start coming. And I'm not gonna lie, the transition has been real. It has been real. You know, like when you know, I know that some Nigerians they don't like when people abroad complain about things about abroad things. But the reality is, people, my people, my people, no, I, there is no land of milk and honey in this, in this, in this earth, on this earth. There's no land of milk and honey that is flowing. It's in the, it's in the heavens. There is no land of flowing milk and honey. Everywhere has its great and it's not so great. Everywhere has its amazing and really not amazing. And, you know, people like to compare they're not so amazing to when somebody else is not so amazing. Please, we cannot compare. If you have not been abroad, you cannot, you cannot say that those abroad should not complain. It's not fair. I understand that there is a level of um, comfort that those abroad have, and there's a, there's, there are better systems in place in terms of, I'm, I'm talking about, when I say abroad, I'm saying away from Nigeria. And there are, there are systems in place that enable a better standard of living. But it doesn't make it so much easier. Like, it, it, there is a lot of, you know, as you, you give as good as, you get as good as you, as you, as good as you give in, in, in all, a lot of these countries in the West. I think you should allow people to complain where they are, wherever they are. If they, if they feel like having a bit of a rant, they have their right to rant. Like, nowhere is perfect. And, you know, for me, living in Nigeria, I enjoy it. Like, I like, you know, I love the weather. The weather for me is, I'm a June baby. Please sun, sun me up. I love it. 
to now come back to this grey weather. I've not spent a winter in the UK since I left. I've not, I had not come back for the winter. That is real. And I spent my first winter last year, last, last year and I wanted to faint. I wanted to faint. Who keeps sending me messages? Sorry, my phone keeps going off. My, my watch keeps going off. I keep hearing it. I wanted to faint. I was like, sorry, I'm going to have to turn off the phone. Turn off the watch. Siri don't listen. Siri don't listen. Listen, Siri. Turn the watch off. Sorry, I can't help you with that on Apple Watch. What's the point? Anyway. Um, yes, what, so, uh, where was I? Living in, like, living, like, I can compare it back. Living back in Lagos, I enjoyed it. I loved the weather. I enjoyed the lifestyle. It was... Not that I went out so much. I barely went out. But when I did, I had fun. Like, you know, I loved eating at, you know, the overpriced restaurants. <laughs> you know, people on the island, people are really trying. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, you know, I loved, I, I just loved Lagos life. I think it was, for me, and, you know, the different events when I, when I did go, it was fun. Like, I, you know, I always have fun when I'm in Lagos. And, you know, I have fun with my friends out there, although I have fewer friends there. Compared to here, I have a lot of friends in the UK and I had a lot fewer friends and it was very evident, <laughs> very evident because, you know, when it's like, oh, man, you don't really got friends, you want to go somewhere like, oh, you're going to ask. Um, <laughs> as, a, as in, like, I, I really had very few friends. Like, if, if one of my friends, like, came in, if you're not around, what am I going to go to this place with? Or, well, honestly, it was that bad. Um, but... <laughs> I know so it's the, I'm being real like I just didn't have as many friends there and you know I, I, that's fine I guess I'm, I was older and also making friends in in Lagos I don't know what it is especially mum friends it was very hard like I don't know what the deal was some parents were just so standoffish especially at, at school people pick up I'm just I was like why are you so why are you giving uh -uh. I, I, I just thought people would be friendly but not everyone like I could count on one hand the amount of play dates that we had and the fr you know the, thankfully the mum friends that I did make they're lovely really really lovely and you know and uh, you know we stay in touch so but yeah that aside the lifestyle I really enjoy in Lagos the lifestyle in London not so much because one of the reasons why I left was that it was just too much fast pace it was like the hustle and bustle the rat race you know, like I said, it's London, not the UK. London is very different from when you, when you, as soon as you leave London, you can feel it. Like I, w I went to school in Bedfordshire, you know, university in Bedfordshire, and um, the difference is clear. Like it's a lot slower, it's a lot more chill. As soon as you enter London, I'm running. Like, it's like a, it's in me. Grow, like growing up in like London, I've just I run for bus, I'll do this one. Everything is ah ah, can I do? So it was like, it, I didn't want to come back to that. And that's part of what I was dreading. And, and also because, you know, I knew I didn't have, my, we didn't have a place here yet. So in the, the, I would have to be at my mum's and I love my mum. She's amazing. But I'm a 30, 35 year old woman staying at my mum's. Trust me, it's not easy. You will butt heads, especially when you've, you're used to being in your own space. You're used to how you do things. And I also have my daughter. This is how I grandparents that have their grandparents that are around there yeah, that look after their children or they are with you when you're trying to tell your child that you don't do this and the grandparent will now do something else it's not it's not an easy thing so imagine doing that 24 7 it's real I'm like, ah, it's like 9 p.m sweet yeah over on tv and i'm like mom she's got a bedtime routine let her get to bed so those are things that i was <sighs> Like I just wasn't looking forward to, and that was what made me reluctant about moving back to the UK. And you know, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad we're here, and it has been a journey. Gosh, it really has been a journey. But it does always. Whenever I come back to London, it always feels like I'm, I'm coming back home. Same thing as how I feel in Lagos. I feel like I'm going back home. I have I have a home in two places, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful that we were able to come back and, you know, and for me, it's to come back and build something here with my family. Like, 
we've already started building something in, in Lagos, is to come back and build something here with my family. It's not easy being apart from my husband, but thankfully we're making it work. I'm not talking too much about the marriage part because we've already spoken about it in this video. So make sure you go and check that video out. I'll link it in my description as well. But yeah, like um, the transition for Feromi has been like work. Lagos, what? You guys have really seen. She said she doesn't want, she doesn't want to go back to Nigeria. Every time, like all the time she'd be like, Mommy, I don't want to go back. I'm letting you know, I don't want to go back. And I think that's mainly because she has way more fun here. There's more places to take children here. There's like, I had, like I said, I have a lot more friends. So that, and a lot of friends that have children. There's a birthday every other week. If we're not having a birthday, we're having a hangout. If, the, if we're not having a hangout, school is doing something. There's, all, there's a lot more activities here. So she's having, she feels, she feels a lot freer and there's a lot more freedom. And, you know, that in itself has made it worth it. Like, has made the challenge of moving back and the change and the transition, the, the, you know, the little bit of struggle that I felt with myself, you know, moving back, it has made it all worth it because it's paying off. She's happy and, you know, we are finding our groove. It's not easy when you're on the, at the bus stop, though, and you're yeah, just minding your business waiting for the bus to go and, you know, take a daughter to school or whatever, and someone stopping by, you to me, hi, in their Range Rover, hi, hi, I watch, I love you, I watch your videos. No shade, I, you know, I love you when you guys say hi, I think that's amazing, it makes me feel amazing that you guys watch my videos. But I'm not going to lie, it's not easy to be on this leg of these bends. <laughs> And have people be like, oh, hi, I watch your videos. Child, God. Lord, you upgrade me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is real. Like, it's very, very humbling. If anything, the UK is a leveler. I always say that you can be very comfortable, have your fancy cars in the UK, but I'm um, in Nigeria. And, and you know, riding your fancy car. You know, I'm driving, I, you know, I'm driving my cute little car in Nigeria, you know, come back to the UK. It's the different thing. It's a different thing because I need to pass my test here. Before I can never get car, I've got to pass that test. And I cannot try and do, uh, let me know. I've got to, I, you know that I did that in Nigeria. I was, I think I was above board. Got my license, but it's a lot easier. Here, oh my goodness. I've got to do my, first of all, I had to like um, change my, um, my provisional license, which is like, what do, they, what do they call it in, in the US? Um, permit, learner's permit. Um, my learner's permit, it was like obviously expired. It's been like 10 years. <laughs> so I had to renew that, change my name on that. It was just, ah, and it took ages. It took me about like two months. Things here in the UK as well, like government wise, could be so slow. So I've got to do that. I've got, I had to get my learner's permit. Now I've gotten that, I've got to do my theory test got to do that theory test as i'm doing my theory test i have to find this driving instructor that will help me i've got to pick a test center that's going to make a sense before after i do that i now book the test spend like 500 pounds just to book the test just to book it all just to book the test yeah and then when i finally book the test is the prayer is that i will pass the test and the money will not flush down the drain so yeah it's a it's a it's a bit of a journey between getting a car is, I think it's a, it's a small thing in comparison to actually getting the license. So yeah. So yeah. If you see me, if you see me outside, holla at your girl. <laughs> and you're driving by, don't holla at your girl. I'm joking, I'm joking. No, say, uh, say hi. I love it. I love when you guys say hi. But yeah, it's real. It's a real humbler and, um, you know, running for a bus to drop my daughter to school is even my husband he really felt it bless him as in as big as you know as tall as he is and like you know we're all running for the bus at the same time he's like babe like ah and how much cab can you take it's pounds or as in every time 20 20 pounds to, to be taking cab it just doesn't make sense like it doesn't make um i'm like i said i'm very i'm very frugal like, i'm not frugal but i i like to spend my money as wisely as i can so if I can get the bus, why am I taking cab all the time? Kill day. You will package you in here. Please. So yeah, like it's uh, it's been real. It's been real. And um, but I'm great, like I said, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we finally have our place. Mate, guys, I'm gonna share a video, like I'll share a later vlog of like us, you know, when we got the place and how it looked before and stuff. It's 
been work. Gosh. And I feel like as well that I've really grown up. You know, I was saying, ah, is it like in Nigeria that I've just been thinking I'm an adult, but I'm really not an adult. But I think it's the difference is that um, it's easier to get things done. No, not easier. But like, you can always get someone to do it for you in Nigeria, basically. <laughs> You could always get someone to move, like, moving. We had someone to move, like, we got people to move, like, the stuff. To, I had, like, um, help that helped me to arrange the things. It's just, just you can, you know, labour is cheaper. Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking about paying them well, so not, not, not underpaying them, guys. You can't be paying, you know, your help, like, next to nothing. But I think it's just easier to get people to do things for you in Nigeria than it is here. Here is expensive man it's expensive um it's pound sterling um so yeah like it's just i feel like i've just had to just do a lot and do it myself if it's not like just carrying and lifting and all of that stuff doing it myself has you know yeah it's made me feel like I've, I'm, I'm growing i've had to just really adult adulting is not beans but yeah again i'm just grateful to god and we out here. I hope this story time is making a sense. Is it, is it really a story time or more like a gist time? Either way, this is, us, this is me letting you know what the dealio is. Are we ever going to move back to Nigeria? I don't know. But it's one of those things that this is our season here right now. And, you know, maybe I, I might end up in, I don't know, in the Bahamas living. Who knows? We might end up there. <laughs> no, but the, the, the point is, is that we are going as the Spirit, the Holy Spirit leads us, and that's what is important for us and as a family. And that's what's important. And as long as we are, like my, me and my husband, we're on the same page with everything, and our focus and our vision is the same, we will continue, by the grace of God, to be a force to be reckoned with, um, no matter what it may seem like physically. In the spiritual, we keep, we keep powering through in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, it's been a change, but it's been a good change. Um, how do I feel about being in, in the UK now? I'm happy, like, I'm happy here. I do miss Nigeria, but I think more, mostly because I'm, I miss being my, with my husband all the time. Um, but this is just how it is for this season. This is not going to be the long term at all. This is just a very short season and the trans the transition it's just, we're still in transition. So, yeah. So I, I see myself as a baby in transition. I'm like, I'm Lagos, London, Lagos, London. So I don't put my, like, my um, location as I am. UK, forget my Ninja people. Forget it. I've left to Jaffa. Not at all. I'm very much, you know, a Ninja babe, you know, and that I always be. So, and I, I think I go back often enough to know that, you know, I'm still very much in Nigeria, please. Okay, okay. Y'all can still be inviting me to those events. Ah, please. Ah, ah. But yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's a bit makes a bit more sense now as to why you're wondering, ah, what's going on here? Is, is this baby, is she really in the UK? This is what's happening for now. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, comment below. And, you know, I like, I like to see your comments respectfully, of course. And, you know, share this video with anyone that's going through transition. I just want to encourage you that it's a season, transitional season. It's a season. And that's it. It's not, it's not a forever thing, especially if you're finding it difficult. Know that God is able to, put, to pull you through and also... Speak up if you need help. It's important to speak up if you need help because that is what friends and family are for, is to help you, especially in those really challenging times. So don't be afraid to ask for help. It's really important. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out. A town down. <laughs> Hi, guys. And again, watch out for my video. Talking about showing up. Watch out for the next video. Ciao. Anyway. Whatever. It's too. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm talking too much. All right. Bye.